Cage certainly took this episode number 12 by the huevos. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. This is Jason, a.k.a. Uh, J-Bone J of the Rambling About Wrestling podcast. And before I get into uh, the meat and potatoes of this review of episode 12, um, I want to throw out an apology to all my fans and all the listeners who also uh, listen to me on the Rambling About Wrestling podcast. Uh, our last episode, I believe it was number 34, was our last one. Um, the one where we had uh, Alex Light on. I just want to apologize for the uh, technical difficulties. And it was right around the time that I started doing the review of Lucha Underground on the podcast. And uh, that's when things started going wrong. And I realized that my review probably came off with me sounding like an absolute idiot. But I was very distracted on by what was going on with the Skype call and everything. So I just want to throw out an apology that the podcast kind of went to hell right around that time that I was doing that. And then shortly after that, um, you know, we, uh, Dizzy had some problems and we had to end the, end the show. So I just want to throw out an apology to our fans. Um, hopefully we can get these problems resolved for this coming week. And, um, lessen the technical difficulties. Uh, I, I, for one, felt bad. Um, you know, stuff happens once in a while. I know Dizzy felt horrible because he was trying to put the whole thing together. So I just wanted to throw that out to the fans uh, before I got into this. Um, but yeah, Lucha Underground, number 12. Uh, speaking of huevos, <laughs> we start off this episode uh, Cage working out in the... Um, in the uh, the underground, I guess, or the backstage part of uh, the temple, uh, the, the gym, whatever, and uh, Cueto approaches him, and he's like, wow, you, you really, you know, some people come in and take the bull by the horns, well, you took the bull by the huevos, and, and uh, comments on how he doesn't want to wait for a championship match, and he's like, well, you're not going to have to wait at all. You are going to get your opportunity. Uh, Prince Puma has been uh, notified that he will be defending his championship tonight. And Cage is like, no, he will lose his championship tonight. And <laughs> the look on Cueto's face is priceless. He's like, mm, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I... I absolutely love Coelho, and I know I've said that before, and I know I've probably said it a lot of times. But man, his character is priceless. Um, man, how they how they put these backstage scenes together, or even you know Coelho in the ring, um, is quite the character. You know, on the on the mic, um, just great, just just a just a tremendous addition to these shows as far as you know a heel. Um, you know, general manager, uh, promoter, you know, whatever you want to call them. Um, just, <laughs> just great. So then it goes into the first match, and we have a, a rematch between Mil Muertes and Phoenix. And the last time we saw these guys wrestle against each other was in the uh, Aztec, what was it called? The Aztec Warfare. And found out that you know, Phoenix was going to be number one, and Bill Moretes was number 20? 20, yeah, 20 man Aztec Warfare. And, um, you know, so I guess, in a sense, you know, Phoenix gets to have a little revenge for uh, losing that match that decided that Aztec Warfare decision, and Bill Moretes. Obviously, also frustrated from coming in last, number 20, and losing. Um, you know, so they're both going to take out some frustration on each other. And, man, this match 
I, I honestly <laughs> don't know what was better. Both matches, this one and the last one, the championship match, both were equally exciting as far as counters, the high-flying ability of you know, Phoenix and Puma, and the brute strength and counter uh you know, counterattacks from, you know, Bill Muertes and Cage. Very, very similar matches, you know, as far as styles. But, um, wow, as far as how this first match ended between Phoenix and Bill Muertes, out of nowhere, <laughs> kind of like an RKO, <laughs> out of nowhere, um, Bill Muertes has Phoenix up and ready to do a superplex off the top rope. And, um, and then upon landing... Phoenix rolls him up out of nowhere and, and pins him and then just quick takes off. And Bill Muertes is pissed and fans just absolutely ecstatic. And uh, I was like, wow, what a finish. You know, just just shocking, absolutely shocking. And, uh, you know, Phoenix gets a little, you know, ha-ha in the end, you know, by winning this match. Great. Great stuff. Next, we go to a promo uh, with Cage. And this promo actually aired, what, about a week or a few days before his uh, debut a few weeks ago. Um, but now it aired on the episode, and it's, it shows him, you know, how, how you know, his brute strength um you know, getting attacked by, was it two, three different guys with, uh, you know, like, you know, you know wood planks or uh, bottles and, you know, just not even phasing him. Um, kind of reminds me of the brutality of someone like Goldberg. Uh, it's the first thing that comes to mind. Um, uh, similar, and yet... Um, you know, and we'll get to the match in a little bit, but the agility of Cage, holy cow. Um, certainly I'll match, you know, Goldberg in his, in his uh, you know, when he first started. I think he got a little bit better as he went on, but man, this, the way Cage is starting out in these matches, especially in the last match, um, it's tremendous. But this is it was a great promo, how it was all done in slow-mo, and then, you know, he crushed the bottle, and, you know, <laughs> it was, it was great, and, you know, he picks up the guy, and throws him behind him in the truck, it's like, wow, it's one of those classic, uh, uh, you know, classic, like a classic bar fight, kind of, sort of, um, and then we get into, uh, a six-man tag team match, which is something we don't see much on uh, Lucha Underground, but this was great. It was, uh, I, <laughs> they're called the crew, but I call them Queto's crew, because obviously uh, they were paid off to, you know, take out Big Rick. Um, so it'll be interesting to see when Big Rick comes back and gets his revenge on the crew. And, and just want to say, uh, best wishes to Big Rick and uh, you know, take care of that eye get well soon uh, <laughs> uh, it was the crew Cortez Castro Mr. Cisco and Bale versus Arjenes Superfly and uh, Aerostar and wow um, what a tremendous three on three tons of action um, more more high flying stuff, yeah, uh, from Arjenes and his team, as opposed to the crew was more of a beat down style, uh, more brutal, you know, more willing to you know bend the rules and get away with stuff. Uh, and, but they they won this match with um, like a three D turned into a code breaker, and they, I've seen them end matches with that before. I don't remember what combination of wrestlers it was. Maybe it was all three. I don't remember. Um, I think that's how they beat uh, Pimpinella. And, um, oh, I can't remember. 
not going to look through my notes. There's one they face, Pimpinella and the, um, the Mini. I can't remember his name. Put it in the notes. Remind me what his name is. <laughs> but it was a good match nonetheless. This, and, you know, the, um, yeah, the crew, Cueto's crew came out on top of this one. Great, great ending. Uh, then we see a, well, what was supposed to be an interview with uh, the champ, uh, Prince Puma, uh, Vampiro interviewing the champ, Prince Puma, along with Conan, except we <laughs> we didn't get an interview with uh, Puma, you know, and it would have been nice to see the champ talk for once because we haven't heard him speak at all. Um, you know, he's been, uh, he's been letting his, all of his talking, uh, come forth in his actions in the ring, you know, like a true champ does, uh, you know, ever since the show started, that's how he's, that's how he's done this. And, um, and, uh, it actually got pretty heated at the end of the interview because, uh, you know, Conan got up in Vampiro's face and, and because Vampiro told him, he's like, I'm sick of you running your mouth. He's like, this is the champ's time to talk and, uh, you know, hype himself up. He's the champ, you know. He should have a chance to express himself. And, you know, because, you know, of his position in the company and everything. And Conan's like, well, all you need to know is that, uh, you know, Puma's going to beat cage tonight and blah 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 and, you know and, and then Puma actually had to you know separate them because you know Conan got pretty hot and Vampiro got pretty hot um yeah Puma you know even the announcer said you know Puma doesn't need Conan you know Puma, Conan is a legend but I don't know if Puma can really trust him. I've got a feeling that Conan may turn on him soon. Um, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, but nonetheless, then this leads into the championship match between Puma um, and Kona, uh, Conan. Excuse me. Conan um, accompanies him to the ring. And you don't see him much. And they said that this was the first time that... Uh, he accompanied him to the ring, and I think that might be right. I know he's been out there before, but maybe it was he showed up after the match, whatever it was. But he was out there for the whole match this time. You know, and Cage comes out to a, you know, a slew of boos, and uh, yeah, the crowd really let him know that uh, they're hating him. And uh, yeah, like I said before, the agility, the agility of Cage, and the high flying. Uh, aerobatics of Prince Puma. Wow, just, you know, Prince Puma just showed, even with, you know, kicking out of moves, being pinned with a move like, a, you know, the jackhammer. How many times have you seen people kick out of jackhammers? Not many. Not many at all. You know, that's, that's why I was thinking about, you know, Goldberg. So I was thinking about, you know, he used to use that. But, um, how, um, Cage even used some, you know, moves off the ropes, showing his agility. And uh, wow, and, you know, I think you know Cage was this close to winning. You know, if he didn't lose his cool and get frustrated, and you know, a shove the ref, and I think the ref even forgave him. You know, he yelled at him for it, but he wasn't going to DQ him for it. Whereas, you know, I think a lot of others would have. You know, he was. He wanted to, uh, he wanted to get DQ'd because I don't know if he felt he couldn't beat him, you know, so he just wanted to end the match. What? But, you know, he was, he was this close. He could have, if we just, you know, kept countering what Prince Puma was throwing at him, we would have had a new champ, you know, honestly, I, I believe that. And, uh, man, uh, tremendous match. And then. Yeah, Cage, uh, you know, kicks him, you know, gives him, kicks him, gives him a low blow from behind, and that caused the DQ. And then, 
you know, you just just kept, you know, wailing on him, attacking him. And Conan even got in the ring. And, uh, uh, yeah, blood, like I said, blood was shed in the temple uh, that night. And uh, Cage ended up picking up the belt and hitting Conan square in the head. And, uh, man, he was just a mess. Blood all over, you know, on the shirt, on the mat, everywhere. And um, and then Cage, out of frustration, destroyed, destroyed the belt. Just took the belt, ripped it in half, you know. And then Puma is, you know, sitting there next to his wounded manager, Conan, holding the belt, just, you know, it's in pieces, you know. And the ref's looking on at both of them. And, you know, Cage is, you know, flexing and everything. And, and uh, you know, and that's how... That's how, why, that's how I thought the episode was going to end right there, you know, with, you know, Cage doing his stuff. And then we get to uh, we show Dario Cueto looking on from his office, peeking through the blinds. And lo and behold, we get the mysterious woman, uh, you know, grabs him, throws him in his chair, and surprises the hell out of him. He's like, what the hell are you doing? Who are you? And she's like, you know, she says she's she's looking for a man uh, who owes her. And <laughs> he's like, not me. I pay my debts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, Dario. Yeah, sure. You, you pay your debts. I, true. Uh, we, we all believe you. <laughs> um, and, uh. She, she says to him, uh, you know, I know he's here in the temple. And, and he's like, you can ask anyone. Who are you looking for? Give me a name. But, you know, maybe I can help you. And she says, I got one word. Matanza. I have no clue who this Matanza is or where this is going. But uh, it was exciting to finally see the, the mysterious woman show up. And... Um, you know, make her presence known. She finally speaks instead of just lurking through the, you know, through the crowd, through the audience, you know, over people, behind people, and then disappearing. Um, so, yeah, it'll be great to see where this goes in the next, you know, several episodes. This is obviously building up to some something or, or someone showing up. Uh, she's after someone. Maybe we'll see her in the ring. Um, I did a little research. I believe she is Savannah, formerly of NXT. Um, and I, uh, I looked on YouTube and saw her in a few matches from like, so it was like five years ago. It was like a bunch of years ago. Uh, excuse me, it wasn't NXT. It was actually back when, um, it was before NXT was its own brand. It was, um, oh, FCW, Florida Championship Wrestling. Um, so, yeah, it'll be great to see, you know, what addition she brings to the show. If she's just going to be a, uh, you know, a valet to someone coming out. Or if she's actually going to get in the ring and wrestle like she did in FCW. And uh, from what I saw, I thought she was okay, you know. Um, I don't know what she's done since. We'll have to have to see where it goes and see who this Matanza is. But yeah, for those of you, you know, I had a comment in from my last review that I did for episode 11. Uh, saying that this is probably the weakest episode that 11 was the weakest episode to date and you know I thought it was good maybe he meant because of you know star power or who was in it but I know I you know I didn't think I think there was necessarily anything wrong with the episode you know maybe some of your favorites weren't in it you know my favorite is you know Johnny Mundo I love John Morrison um uh, it looks like he's going to be coming back this week, hopefully. 
Um, he's been gone for a little bit since Aztec Warfare, I believe. So he's been gone for a little bit, but that's okay, you know. Uh, you can't get the same people in the same episode all the time, otherwise it gets boring. You know, you got to switch it up, bring in new people, you know, different rivalries, you know. And I think they've been doing a good job with that. You know, the rivalries that are really good, they have rematches like Cuerno and uh, Drago. You know, and then like they, like in this episode 12, they did Mil Muertes against Phoenix again. That was tremendous. So, uh, you know, the, the formulas, the formula works, you know, you know, you know, for, for an hour length show, they're, they're doing, they're doing it good. You know, if they, if they dragged it out longer, maybe as they, you know, build up the roster a little more, maybe somewhere down the road, they can go to two hours. But honestly, with a show like this, I don't think they want to do that too quickly. Um, you know, what they're doing it now, it's fresh. It's quick, it's exciting, you know, and it's all jam-packed in an hour, and it's not, you know, you're not sitting there with a bunch of filler, you know. You get your hours worth, bam. There's no, there's no snoozing in this in these episodes, you know. There's nothing boring, you know. Even the backstage segments are tremendous. So yeah, you know, they they got the formula, they're doing it well, and uh can't wait to see what's up for for 13. They just put a um uh, not a spoiler, but just a little preview of uh, Dario Cueto's. Uh, they put it up on YouTube, and I think it's also on the Facebook page. Dario Cueto's in the office talking to who I'm assuming is uh, Johnny Mundo. And I think he's talking to him and says something to the effect of uh, Let, let's bygones be bygones and, and something like that. And, <laughs> It's like, do you really trust Dario Cueto? Do you really trust him? It's like, no, you can't. <laughs> you, you can't trust this guy for two seconds. It's like, he'll turn on you. You know, look what he did to Big Rick, you know, with the crew. You can't trust this guy. Uh, great character, though. Love him. So, so that's my review for this episode. Uh, 12 is great. Can't wait till 13. And um, so, yeah, if you... If you like my reviews for Lucha Underground, please check out my other stuff. I do discussion topics on, you know, WWE, pay-per-view, um, you know, fallouts, predictions, and amongst other things. And uh, I'm also part, like I said, I'm J-Bone, part of the Rambling About Wrestling podcast. It's on Wednesday night. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Thursday nights. We changed it. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Thursday nights, 7 p.m. Central. And uh, I also do a review for Lucha Underground in that podcast, too. Uh, sometimes a little more condensed version of it. Um, but we talk about all sorts of stuff. NXT, we talk about stuff that we love. Very good quality wrestling. You know, we don't sit and, and, and bash a lot of stuff that we don't hate. You know, you, you want to listen to haters? There's plenty of haters out there on YouTube. Go listen to them. You know, we try to keep it positive, keep it fresh, keep it, um, you know, just talk about good quality stuff. You know, the stuff that's worth talking about. Uh, we don't waste a lot of time on the stuff that's, you know, <laughs> you know, we're not going to give Fandango a half an hour, you know. Uh, <laughs> so just wanted to throw that little plug out there. Thanks for watching.